Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. Please follow me along in the scriptures that we will be looking at today. Follow me along. Check me out. Make sure I'm telling you the truth. Make sure I'm not lying to you. If we come to a portion of scripture and you are unsure about the context of the scriptures that we are looking at, pause the video and search the context on uh, yourself okay follow me along word for word verse by verse and also follow me along because sometimes this my mouth will go quicker than my brain okay be a berean search the scriptures daily whether these things be so okay follow me along hey brother thank you thank you i'm gonna try to get a hold of you this saturday i got i'll remember the time difference um, I'm going to try to get a hold of you this Saturday, all right? So, um, you know, via Skype or whatnot. So, uh, but thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. Let's begin in Luke chapter 20, verses 1 on to verse 8. And it came to pass, that on one of those days, as he, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, taught the people in the temple and preached the gospel. This is before the death, burial, and resurrection. The gospel that was being preached before the death, burial, and resurrection was the gospel of the kingdom, the kingdom of heaven. Okay? Okay? The chief priests and the scribes came upon him with the elders and spake unto him, saying, Tell us, by what authority doest thou these things? Or who is he that gave thee this authority? And I love our Lord's response here. He answers their question with a question. A question that they ought to have known, but they didn't. And our Lord is such that when you read the scriptures or you go on to him, he is going to tell you that one thing you lack. Okay? Verse 3, And he answered and said unto them, I will also ask you one thing, and answer me. The baptism of John, was it from heaven or of men? Now this is in regards to authority, okay? And we're going to look at this because you're going to see I've got to find a thumbnail, but this is going to be about baptism. And they reason, now check this out. Check this out. We are going to see the reasoning of these types of people who, number one, are not saved, but also look to themselves rather than the Lord. Check this out. And they reason with themselves, saying, If we shall say from heaven, he will say, Why then believe ye, why then believe ye him not? But, and if we say of men, all the people will stone us, for they be persuaded that John was a prophet. That reasoning, looking at both sides of the equation. Now, in study and research of certain things, yes, but see, in the context here, baptism, this thing of baptism, that which we are addressing today, okay, this is what the Lord said. Who gave John his authority? Man or God? We all know the answer to that. Even the devils know the answer to that. It's God. Okay? All right? But see, these people, the Pharisees and that kind of stuff, they were their own authority. And instead of answering the question at all, they sought for the gray area. And there is no gray area. You see that? And they answered that, and they answered that they could not tell whence it was. 
And look at how our Lord responds. And Jesus said unto them, Neither tell I you by what authority I do these things. And, and you know, that makes me think right away in John chapter 3, when our Lord was talking to the beloved Nicodemus, who I truly believe is in heaven. <clears throat> uh, let me see. Uh, in John chapter 3, verses 10 on to verse 12. Art, uh, Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? And James reminds us all to not be many masters. Okay? Verily, verily, I speak unto thee. I, verily, verily, I say unto thee. We speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? Is it possible that these charismatic devils, Catholics, Pentecostals, Church of Christ, all these devils who believe that water baptism is necessary for salvation, is it possible that their authority that they are getting that from is them themselves and not from heaven? I think so. The Charismatics. The Charismatics. Now, I was involved with the Charismatics very early on in my walk with the, our Lord. Okay? And uh, the 28th of this month will mark officially 15 years since the Lord saved me. Okay? But I got involved with the Charismatics, the Oneness Pentecostal Charismatics, okay? And when it comes to the, the term, as far as religion is concerned, of Charismatic, Charismatic is basically an umbrella term. But those who are uh, these Satanic Christians, um, they do follow a lot of the same tenets. But you got to remember... The marks of what is the charismatic faith is not relegated just to what is called Christianity. Hindus with their kundalini, the snake going up the spine, and the seizure-like um, activity that happens with some of these, like in, um, I have seen with my own eyes in a uh, charismatic church building where people got the, the jerks, as it used to be called, the shakes, a type of a seizure. And when you look in the scripture, even though I do believe there are legitimate uh, medical reasons why people will have seizures, a majority of the time, and scripture verifies this, seizures are linked with devil activity. Okay, we've talked about that before. But the Hindus have the seizing and the jerks, as they used to be called. As I have seen people in these church buildings, these charismatics, shaking on the ground and doing this. And, of course, the ridiculous speaking in tongues. It's interesting, though. Uh, when you look in the scriptures, it says speak with tongues. That's going to be a different video. We're going to talk to, uh, about that. But now let's, okay. And also too, there, like I said, there are different, you know, the charismatic thing is not just relegated to Christianity. Okay. Like I said, the Hindus have done it. And also some of the Buddhists and stuff like that. Okay. So this spasmodic, demo, excuse me, devilish stuff is not just relegated to Christianity. Okay, but it is more known within Christianity. And those who go under the umbrella of charismatic, such as the Pentecostals, okay, such as Catholics, such as the Methodists, the Church of Christ, okay, Campbellites they're called, and so on and so forth, okay, they have a lot of the same tenets, okay. Number one. Number one, 
Okay, the first thing that all these guys do that is error. They don't rightly divide the word of truth. Okay. Mo, uh, to this day, I have not personally met a charismatic who, when you ask them, when did the New Testament begin? With the birth of Jesus. Okay. You're wrong. But, okay. They don't rightly divide the word of truth. And you run into some of these charismatics who do rightly divide the word of truth, supposedly. But there again, the problem that you run into is, well... The church, there, uh, the, a hyper dispensationalism, which say that there is one gospel, two bodies within the body of Christ, one of the Jew and one of the Gentile. There's a gospel to the Jew and a, ga a gospel of the Gentile. That's crazy. And a lot of these hyper dispensationalists believe it is faith alone from Genesis on to Revelation. Okay? That's not being dispensational. All right? Another tenet that they all share is, and to this day, I have yet to meet one charismatic, whatever flavor they are, that believes the scriptural doctrine of eternal security. Once saved, always saved. Okay? I have yet to meet one personally. Okay? Are there charismatics out there who do believe in eternal security? I know not of any. Because they had, you know, the Holy Ghost come upon them because, see, it goes contrary to what they themselves want to believe. Because uh, the Holy Ghost is upon me. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost this. Okay, and they mock our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. See, the charismatic believes that the Holy Ghost will come and go, come and go, come and go, as if they were still under the law. Okay? Another tenet that they all usually share is that Christians are going through the great tribulation. And my southern brethren in America, I mean no offense by doing that. Yes, I have yet to meet a charismatic who believes in the scriptural doctrine of the redemption of the purchased possession. Okay? I have yet to meet one. They all believe... Okay, are there some that don't? I don't know. But what I have experienced, they all tend to believe that that the Christians are going through the great tribulation. That there is no redemption of the purchased possession before the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? All right? So, they believe in, well, number one, they don't rightly divide the word of truth. Okay? They're against eternal security. All right. And as far as the redemption of the purchased possession, you know, going up before the time of Jacob's trouble, they usually don't. I have yet to meet one who does. Okay. Three strikes, you're out. But for another majority, now this is, um, this is where some differ. But again, those that I have encountered, okay, share these tenets. Water baptismal regeneration. Acts 2.38 is the gospel. Huh. And also, the evidence of the Holy Ghost by spiking in, spiking in tongues. Interesting, in the scriptures, uh, it mentions speaking with tongues. But that will be another video. Our dear brother, my best friend, Alexander B. Hartley, um, did a very good video addressing that himself. Well, we're going to do one or two here eventually, but uh, if I can remember, that will be in the description box. If I forget, brother, put it in the, put it in the comment section, okay? So these are the basic things of these charismatics that they hold to. And today we are going to address baptism, okay? Now, like I said, all of these that I have mentioned, the one number one thing that they all do not do, and they are, and I'm going to use this word, screwed up from the beginning, is that none of them rightly divide the word of truth. And if they do, okay, if they claim to, if they claim to, 
they all bur virtually believe that it's faith alone, believe in and save from Genesis on to Revelation. And anyone with half a brain could read the first couple of chapters of the book of Genesis and be like, uh, something doesn't add up here with your believe and save. My southern brethren, no offense for me making that back with my voice, okay? Turn to Matthew chapter 3. We're going to read this in its entirety. We are going to look at baptism today, but we're going to uh, specifically address the confusion instilled by Satan, because God is not the author of confusion, about the thing of baptism in correlation with their blessed Acts 2.38. Okay? This is not milk. Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3. In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, the kingdom of heaven, which only appears in Matthew over 30 times, okay, over 30 times, the phrase kingdom of heaven only appears in Matthew. The kingdom of heaven, dear people, is the actual, physical, literal kingdom with our Lord Jesus Christ, who is God our Father, sitting on the throne at Jerusalem. Okay? The kingdom of heaven in every do the work do the work yourself. Okay? You get you you get you one of these that don't really bleed through the fine Indian pay or India paper in the scriptures. You get one of these and mark every time you see the kingdom of heaven and you read the context, it's always about an actual physical literal kingdom. The kingdom of God, on the other hand, most of the time is a reference onto that which is spiritual, okay? Spiritual, not physical. There are some occasions where the kingdom of God can be a reference onto the physical kingdom of heaven, but that, like everything, is determined by context, okay? Now, we're at 17 minutes here. Most of you charismatics who believe in your sensationalism, your emotionalism, and that your feelings, you're probably gone already because this was probably going to be a two-hour video. Okay, so whatever. I dare you to keep listening. All right? So the kingdom of heaven is always the physical, literal kingdom. Okay? And when you get these charismatics talking about the kingdom of heaven today... That shows you what? They are not rightly dividing the word of truth. Young man, you are not rightly dividing the word of truth. You're in grave error. Okay? And young man, I have known people who I refer to as dark implants who use their disabilities to infiltrate and deceive and then fall back and hide behind their disabilities. Okay? Just because someone is disabled does not mean that they are not working for the devil. They have a very good cover for oftentimes to get sympathy. Like that, like that one guy from Australia. You know, I called on the name of the Lord. He said, whatever, you devil, you're using your disability for the advantage and work of Satan. Okay? So, just, just be aware of that, okay? Let's continue. Verse 3 in Matthew 3. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Elias, Isaiah, Isaiah saying, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Hold your place and go to Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. Okay? Isaiah chapter 40. John the Baptist was the forerunner to prepare the people for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, the Son of David, the King of the Jews. Okay? Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? Isaiah chapter 40, verses 3 and verse 5. The voice of him 
that crieth in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, the low parts, the poor. Remember our Lord said, Blessed are ye poor in the Sermon on the Mount. Okay? You gotta remember when it talks about mountains, hills, depending on the context, sometimes mountains and hills are references on to persons, spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Like in Revelation chapter 17, verse 15, about the waters are referenced as many as peoples, okay? And that's dependent on context, okay? As in here, okay? Every valley, low place, shall be exalted. Blessed are the poor. Okay? Hath not uh, the Lord chosen the weak things of this world to confound the things that are wise? Even Paul mentions that for doctrine within the Pauline epistles for us today. And every mountain and hill shall be made low. Mountain. High up. You know, these guys who get their head in the clouds thinking there's something when they're nothing. They're on their high horse. Okay? A mountain is bigger than a hill. But see, there are varying degrees of pride and arrogance, okay? So you see that? The valleys are the low places. They will be exalted. Blessed are the poor. And those who are high and lofty in themselves will be brought down. And every mountain and hill shall be made low. And the crooked shall be made straight. And the rough places plain. Yes, the baptism of John. Is it of heaven or of men? Hmm? And then you read Mark chapter 5 about how ye... Um, um, place here. And let's go to Mark chapter 5 so I don't botch that up. In quoting that about the traditions of men make things crooked. Okay. Uh, Mark chapter 5. Uh, what is it? Mark chapter? Oh, no, excuse me. Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9. Thank you, brother. Uh, uh, Mark chapter 9. Oh, where is that? <laughs> One second. I'm sorry about that. Mark chapter 7. Okay. Verse 13. Verse 9. And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God that ye may keep your own tradition. And verse 3 in Mark chapter 7. Uh, verse 13 in Mark chapter 7. Making the word of God of none effect through your tradition, which ye have delivered. And many such like things do ye. So... Back to Isaiah 40, verse 4. And the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain. Okay? And then the Pharisees, you know, their ways are movable that thou canst not know them. They make broad their phylacteries, right? But straight is the gate, and narrow is the way. And the crooked shall be made straight. See how that works? And the rough places plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. Now, the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, okay? That was happening, yes, in part when he was first on the earth, but when the Lord comes back at his second coming, all eyes are going to see the Lord coming back at his second coming. Comprende? Okay, let's go back to Matthew. All right? Verse 4, and the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and a leathern girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey, very similar to Elijah, who was dressed in a very similar fashion. And uh, John is not himself Elijah, okay? We have a video on this channel that addresses that, okay? Just so you know, he came in the spirit of Elijah. We're not going to get off on that. Link in the description box, okay? Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. So a lot of people, you heretic from out west, a lot of people came to the baptism of John, okay? Yeah. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? 
Bring forth, therefore, fruits meet for repentance. And think not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And of course that will happen, uh, which happens within this dispensation when us Jew, when us Gentiles get dra uh, grafted into the tree of the Jew. We're going to touch on that a little later. Okay. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Now, see, he's doing this in context of the coming of the literal physical kingdom of heaven. That is what John's baptism was about. Baptizing people onto the kingdom of heaven. Okay? All right, let's continue. And now also the axe is laid unto the roots of the trees. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. I indeed baptize you with the water, with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And these wicked charismatics take this out of context every single time. Okay? every single time. And they always po uh, point to the cloven tongues uh, of fire, okay? Or as a fire, or whatever. Okay, they always point to that, you know. Holy Ghost fire. They, they, they don't rightly divide the word of truth. And they don't believe in eternal security. The Holy Ghost can come and go, come and go, so they can lose their salvation. Then they go to Hebrews, what is it, 6? Or 4 or 6? No, it's 6, where it talks about how you can lose your salvation. And surprisingly, you can't get it back Okay, so that's what Hebrews talks about. Let's continue. Whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Okay? The power of his second coming, stuff like that. Okay? Then, now, okay, then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. Now, there are some wicked heretics out there who's like, this was just Jesus and John. No, it wasn't. No, it was not. John's baptism was an event. People were coming around constantly, okay, around John, okay? It was an event. He was coming. He was preaching the kingdom of heaven, okay? It was not just John and Jesus, all right? Stupid devil. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Now, heretics who like to um, swallow, a, uh, what is it, strain at a gnat and swallow the camel, okay? They will say, He saw! So only John saw this! Mm, no. 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 No, I do not believe so at all. They will, they will strip all that surround that two-letter word, he, they will focus on. Hence, strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. You see how that works? You're a wicked devil, buddy. Okay? If you don't shut up, I'm going to start naming you. All right? And see, the thing about baptism right here is very significant. Because in the baptism of Jesus, the Spirit of God descending like a dove, like a dove, boom, kind of like dive bombing him, if you will, okay? And lighting upon him, the baptism that Jesus went in did was for what? Come on, come on, it's pretty obvious there, for identification. Jesus' baptism was identifying him as the Mashiach. 
It's not this nonsense that this is when Jesus became God. Okay? God was manifest in the flesh. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Born of a woman. Okay? All right? Jesus did not become... That's heresy. That's heresy. Okay? And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Okay? So we see here baptism. Number one, John's baptism was in context to prepare the people for the coming of the Lord and for the kingdom of heaven. Okay? Baptizing them with, with what? Uh, the baptism, uh, where is it? Uh, where he says, uh, baptize them, yes, and confessing their sins. And his baptism, bringing forth their, uh, verse 9, bring forth therefore fruits, meet for repentance, okay? It was for what? The kingdom of heaven that the Lord Jesus Christ himself was coming to offer unto his people, the Jews, okay? All right, you with me? And Jesus' baptism was what? Identifying him as the Mashiach, the Messiah, very, very important. Very important. Okay? Now, let's go to Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1, we're going to read verses 1 out of verse 12. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written, in the prophets, behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, this is Isaiah 40, which we already looked at. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Hold your place here and go to Malachi, not Malachi. <laughs> I cannot unhear that since you said that to me brother malachi chapter 3 verses 1 on verse 3 behold i will send my messenger and he shall prepare the way before me and the lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple as he did in his uh, grand entrance when they put the palm th things down and he came in riding on an ass, full of an ass, and they were crying Hosanna to the son of David. Okay, okay, you with me? All right. Even the messenger of the covenant, whom ye delight in, behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. But who may abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. What did, it, what did the Lord do? He went right after all the religious people who put tradition above scripture. Okay? You know, the Jesus of the scriptures of the red words before the death, burial, and resurrection was not this lovey-dovey, sugary, sweet, saccharine, sweet, uh, bro hug person that the devil tells you he was. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, was extremely confronting. Our Lord Jesus Christ put his finger on that one thing you lack. Okay? All right, why do you think the religious people hated him? Okay? Let's continue. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi, and, purify, and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Hmm? Sons of Levi. Sons of Levi. All right? Now, of course, when he was come the first time, all right, offering the kingdom of heaven. All right? When he comes back the second time with us who go up, um, he's going to come as the Lion of the tribe of Judah. And the Lion of the tribe of Judah is the correct flag of Israel. Those of you who, you know, <laughs> when the Lord come back at the, his second coming with us, 
It's going to be, Israel's flag is going to be the flag of the Lion of the tribe of Judah. So, back to chapter uh, Mark chapter 1, verse 4, picking up at verse 4. John did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Before the death, burial, and resurrection, the Lord was offering the kingdom of heaven unto the Jews. He did not go to the Gentiles. He went to the Jews. Okay? All right? The law was still binding until the death, burial, and resurrection and the blood, the blood that cleanseth us from all sins. Okay? Uh-huh. Yeah. Let's continue. And there went out unto him all the land of Judea, and they of Jerusalem, and were all baptized of him in the river of Jordan, confessing their sins. And again, and John was clothed with camel's hair and with a girdle of a skin about his loins, and he did eat locusts and wild honey, and preached, saying, There cometh one mightier than I, there cometh one mightier than I after me, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and to unloose. Or unloose. I indeed have baptized you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee where, and was baptized of John in Jordan. And straightway coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens open and the Spirit like a dove descending upon him. And there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And immediately the capitalist spirit driveth him into the wilderness. Okay? Again, see, devils will distract and try to put your focus on, well, just John saw that. Okay? What is that a distraction from? What the baptism actually was. It was a identification, identifying Jesus as the son of David, okay? That is the danger of some of these devil heretics from out west who are, will, will forget all of what we just talked about of what the baptism is and will have you focus on, well, just John saw it, just sub John saw it. I don't believe that was the case, but see, the overall point of it is it was an identification. Jesus was identified as the Messiah, regardless. Okay? All right? Okay? Now, let's go to Luke chapter 3. Luke chapter 3. Okay? So we see now in two witnesses uh, in Scripture, meaning Matthew and Mark, about what baptism actually is. Okay? We're going to get to your Mark 16, you guys, so shut up. Luke chapter 3, verses 3 on to verse 17. Luke chapter 3, verses 3 on to verse 17. And he came into all the country about Jordan, preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. As it is written, and of course, this is talking about John. Okay? <clears throat> as it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, saying... The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be brought low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough way shall be made smooth. Adding tradition. Confusing. Okay? And all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Okay? All flesh shall see the salvation of God. The cross... God's salvation is there for everybody. But you have to go according to his terms, not your own. You don't boot the door out the way, okay? Then said he to the multitude that came forth to be baptized of him, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth therefore fruits worthy of repentance, and begin not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. 
For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. And the people asked him, saying, What shall we do then? He answereth and saith unto them, Now look at this. He that hath two coats, let him impart to him that hath none. That's a work. And he that hath meat, let him do likewise. That's also a work. Then came also publicans to be baptized, and said unto him, Master, what shall we do? And he said unto them, Exact no more than that which is appointed you. Also a work. Okay? And soldiers likewise demanded of him, saying, And what shall we do? And he said unto them, Do violence to no man, neither accuse any falsely, and be content with your wages. You get the point. Okay? And as the people were in expectation, and all men mused, that means think, okay? Uh, you know, the things called a muse, amusement parks, not to think, a theist is someone who doesn't believe in deity, okay? Are, th this was crazy, our Masonic founding fathers were theists, not of the church of the living God. Yeah, yeah. And I know you watch some of these. Anyway. And the people were in expectation, and all men mused in their hearts of John, whether he were the Christ or not. John answered, saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. What are we reading to? Verse 17. Whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor, and will gather the wheat into his garner, but the chaff he will burn with fire unquenchable. Okay? All right? So, the baptism of John is number one of heaven, preparing people for the kingdom of heaven, and more, more so, preparing the people for the coming of the Lord. Okay? Now, go to John chapter 1. John chapter 1, verses 19 on to verse 28. John chapter 1, verses 19 on to verse 28. And this is the record of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Art thou Elias? And he saith, I am not. Again, the thing, the video about Elijah where we address this will be in the description box. Okay? Because they asked him, Are you Elijah? It's like, no. Okay? Uh, Elijah himself will return during the time of Jacob's trouble. He is one of the two witnesses, being Moses and Elijah. It is not Enoch, you people. Okay? It is not Enoch. <clears throat> All right. And they asked him, What then? Art thou Elias? And he saith, I am not. Art thou that prophet? And he answered, No. What does that mean? Hold your place here. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 18 and 19. When they say, Art thou that prophet? Prophet. What is that a reference on to? Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 18 and 19. I will rise them up, I will raise them up, a prophet, capital P there, from among their brethren like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. Remember, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? Just remember that. Okay? 
Remember that. There is a distinction between skin suit and Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Devils are stupid. They don't want people to get that. Whatever. Okay. Now let's go back to John. Okay. So when they asked him in verse 21, art thou that prophet? And he answered, no. That's what they're referring to. What we looked at in Deuteronomy. Now let's continue. Okay. Then said they unto him, who art thou? That we may give an answer to them that sent us. What sayest thou of thyself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Isaiah. And they which were sent were of the Pharisees. And they asked him, and said unto him, Why baptizest thou then, if thou be not that Christ, nor Elias, neither that prophet? John answered them, saying, I baptize with water, but there standeth one among you, whom ye know not. He it is, who coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoes latch it I am not worthy to unloose. These things were done in Bethabara, beyond Jordan, where John was baptizing. And you got to remember what our Lord said of himself. What our Lord said of himself. Okay? In Revelation 22, verse 16, just one verse, okay? Remember what our Lord said. Okay, they asked John if he were the Christ, that prophet, okay? And he's like, uh, <laughs> no, okay? Our Lord Jesus Christ is, Revelation 22, verse 16. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. Jesus Christ is the morning star. Okay. The day star also is attributed unto our Lord Jesus Christ. Isaiah 14, verse 12. O Lucifer, son of the morning. The Bibles, a majority of them, put in morning star and want you to believe that Jesus is fallen from heaven. Okay? Lucifer is son of the morning. Morning star is the Lord Jesus Christ. Dear people, get rid of your Bibles. Oh, sh shut up. Get rid of your Bibles. And get the scriptures, the authorized version. Okay? I know that says Bible on the cover there, on the spine there. I know. I know. It doesn't say Bible within the scriptures. Okay? It doesn't. I'm a stickler on that. But whatever. Distinction, 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 distinction. Okay? There, there's a difference between we who are saved and them. Unless you're one of these idiots who want to blend everything together like they did in Genesis chapter 11. Okay? It's all about distinction. We got to go full circle, people. Okay? Get the scriptures. Get the scriptures. Okay? So, the baptism of John. The baptism of John was of heaven. Preparing people for, for the Lord. Okay? And see, some things happen. In Isaiah 53, we read about our Lord going and being crucified, okay? And dying, taking upon him our punishment. And also in Isaiah chapter 49, it is prophesied. Number one, it was prophesied in Isaiah chapter 53, also in Isaiah chapter 52. But it was prophesied in Isaiah chapter 53 that the Messiah... Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, was to come to die for the sins of the world. And, you know, to death, burial, and resurrection. And the blood, his blood, that perfect, sinless blood, because he kept the Ten Commandments perfectly. Hence, the sinful flesh of Jesus. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, you devils. Okay? Sin is in this. And because Jesus Christ did what nobody could do, keep the law perfectly, hence 
that sinful flesh was sanctified because he never sinned, can't sin, or never will sin. Do you understand? Okay? But it was prophesied in Isaiah 53 and in Isaiah 52 about how the Savior was going to die. Okay? And be and because of his blood, we're all healed. Okay? The death, burial, and resurrection, and the blood shed on the cross. Okay? But it was also prophesied that us Gentiles were going to get a part of it. Isaiah 49, verses 5 on to verse 12. Not 40, right? Isaiah 49, verses 5 on to verse 12. Okay? And now, saith the Lord, that formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob again to him. Though Israel be not gathered, yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Lord, and my God shall be my strength. This is about our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? God is not a three-person trinity. Okay? That's satanic heresy. Okay? That's satanic heresy. All right? Okay? God is not three persons that make one God. That's ridiculous. A person is a spirit, soul, and body. You read about that in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and also in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. Okay? The Trinity is of Satan. But don't worry, you guys who get left behind, you're going to see your Trinity during the time of Jacob's trouble, and it's going to be the devil, the beast, and the false uh, and the false prophet. Okay? There's your Trinity. <coughs> On your Trinity. Okay? All right? Verse 6. And he said, oh, God is spirit, soul, and body. Okay? That's what God is. The Godhead. Okay? God, okay, spirit, the Holy Ghost, soul, the Father, body. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, okay? Even the brilliant idiots can't get that, okay? Let's continue. And he said, It is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved of Israel. I will also give thee for light to the Gentiles, that thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. Hmm. So right here we see in Isaiah 49 a reference unto us Gentiles having part of the salvation that is unto the Jew. Hmm. Hmm. Very interesting. Let's continue. Thus saith the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel, and his capital H, holy, capital O, one, to him whom man despiseth, to him whom the nation abhorreth, to a servant of rulers, kings shall see and arise. Princes also shall worship because the Lord, because of the Lord that is faithful and the all capitals, holy, uh, capital H, capital O, O Holy One of Israel, and he shall choose thee. Look at that verse. Okay. Thus saith the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel, and his Holy One, to whom man despiseth. Yes, because the Lord puts his finger on that one thing you lack, and is very confronting. Okay. Uh, the gospel for us today cannot be a glory unless it is first a death. Okay. That's how that works. All right? And so many people want to boot the door because they think they're a good person or they're born in England or their skin color is black or whatever. They want to do anything they want to get the to get Jesus out of the way. He is the door. So they boot the door out of the way. That's why most people don't want him. Okay? Because they're good people after all. Because you were born in England or you're black or whatever. Nonsense. Let's continue. Okay, and also, to whom the nation abhorreth. <laughs> if America was founded as a Christian nation, you idiot. Okay? Explain to me Maryland. Explain to me Maryland. America was doomed by that point, okay? 
America was doomed. Okay, with the original 13? Huh? The original 13? America was doomed at that moment anyway when the America, the Christian America, allotted for a state of the Union that was for the persecuted Catholics. Our country was founded by Freemasons, man. What's wrong with you? Hey. You wouldn't happen to be a Freemason, would you? Ooh. 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 You wouldn't happen to be a Freemason, would you, buddy? You even said that of your hero. And you still recommend him. Even though you believe he might have been a, a Freemason. Oh, wow. Wow. Hey, you my enemies. <laughs> anyway, anyway, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Enough of that. Enough of that. Enough of that. Verse 8. Thus saith the Lord, in an acceptable time have I heard thee. And in a day of salvation have I helped thee. And I will preserve thee, and give thee for a covenant of the people, to establish the earth, to cause to inherit the desolate heritages. That thou might, mayest say to the prisoners, Go forth, to them that are in darkness, shew yourself. They shall feed in the ways, and their pastures shall be in all high places. They shall not hunger nor thirst, neither shall the heat nor sun smite them. For he that hath mercy on them shall lead them even by the springs of water shall he guide them. And that is not a reference unto water baptism, salvation, you devils. And I will make all my mountains a way, and my highway shall be exalted. Behold, these shall come from far, and lo, these from the north and from the west, and these from the land of Sinem. Okay, so here we have several. Paul talks about that in his uh, in his epistles about laud him ye Gentiles, how the Old Testament scriptures prophesied about us Gentiles getting a part of this. Okay, now go to Matthew chapter ten. Okay, because this is something that we have to establish. Okay, Matthew chapter ten. Okay, this thing of to the Jew. First, you read the you charismatics. You read the book of Acts. You think that's the main source of your doctrine. The book of Acts is a book of transition. Okay? It's a book of transition. The doctrine for us today is found within the Pauline epistles. Okay? You read the book of Acts. Paul himself went, even though he was the apostle of the Gentiles, what did he do? His, name, his manner was to go to the synagogues first, to the Jew first, and also to the Gentile. Okay? To the Jew first. The kingdom of heaven was specifically offered unto the Jews. Okay? The kingdom of God. After the death, burial, and resurrection, and the blood shed on the cross, the kingdom of God was first offered unto the Jews alone while being this dispensation. Okay? And see, you charismatics, that's your big problem. You don't rightly divide the word of truth. That's your biggest problem, other than you've fallen for Satan's heresies. You don't rightly divide the word of truth, son. That's your problem. That's your ultimate problem. You don't rightly divide the word of truth. And when you don't rightly divide the word of truth, you become a charismatic. You become a Mark the Messenger. Okay? You become a hyper dispensationalist. <laughs> Talk about an, an irony. And these guys, faith alone from Genesis under Revelation, that's not being dispensational. But anyway, Matthew chapter 10, verses 5 on to verse 7. Okay? To the Jew first. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not. Verse 6. 
but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. The physical, literal kingdom. Elsewhere in the other gospel accounts, you'll see where he says the kingdom of God, you know, because they needed to believe on their Messiah in order for the kingdom of heaven to come about. Even though it was prophesied in Isaiah 53 and in Isaiah 52 that he was going to be the, you know, that he was going to die. Also, Genesis chapter 22, verse 8, God shall provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering, okay? And it was also prophesied that us Gentiles were going to have a part of this, okay? But it's to the Jew first. It was to the Jew first. All right? And as ye go preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And then you go to Matthew chapter 15, verses 21 on to verse 24. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coasts of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan, not a Hebrew, not a Jew. Okay? Not a Jew. Okay? And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coasts and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel, to the Jew first. And of course, because she went after him and the Lord is like, wow, O woman, great, in verse 28, O woman, great is thy faith, be it unto thee even as thou wilt. He made an exception there. Okay? He made the exception there. And of course, John chapter 4. John chapter 4. John chapter 4, verses 21 on to verse 26. Okay? Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh, when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye, which is plural, worship ye, know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. Now, scripturally, what is a Jew will be in the description box. It's not my problem if you don't want to sit through that and go through the scriptures, okay? Scripturally, a Jew is basically a Hebrew. There are rare exceptions, like in the book of Esther, where people became Jews, okay? But scripturally, when it says Jew, it's a reference onto the Hebraic people, okay? Okay? A Jew scripturally, with the exception that is in Esther, was Hebrew, is Hebrews. And of course, what is that, Genesis 13? I think that is. Where Hebrew is first associated with Abram, who would become Abraham. Okay? All right? The Hebraic people are of Shem, of the lineage of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Why do you think Satan has gone to great lengths today to confuse what a Jew is? More on that in a second. Let's continue. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father, capital S, in spirit and in truth. And that's a lowercase s there. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, capital S. Bibles say God is spirit. Blurring distinction. God is a spirit. Distinction. You mean, what do you mean distinction? Well, God is a spirit. But there is a, there is that spirit of antichrist. There is the spirit of man. There is the spirit of beast. Okay. But God is a spirit giving a distinction between spirits. Okay. And so you take that A out. 
Well, how are you to know which one is which? Well, you don't got to go get yourself to a church building and you got to find you a Bible that speaks to you in your language. <laughs> Not in rhetoric or anything, but that you can understand. How stupid. Your preference has nothing to do with it. Okay? And you have to have a Jesuit trained cemeterian with a $100,000 piece of paper on his wall. Or her wall, right? Uh, to tell you the distinction. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit, lowercase s, and truth. The woman saith unto him, I know that Messiah is coming, which is called Christ. And Christ is anointed one. That's what Christ means. Jesus, Jehovah saves Christ, the anointed one. Okay? Okay. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. Now, <laughs> and see, here, here's the, the tactics of devils who strain at a net and swallow the camel. Okay? I've addressed this last week quite extensively. Okay? But here's what they do. Jesus himself did not say there, in the red words, he did not say, I am the Messiah, did he? No, he did not. He, he didn't say it there, did he? But the woman said, I know that Messiah cometh. And he said, I am he. I that speak unto thee am he. So he, without saying the word Messiah, Admitted to, uh, yeah, I'm the Messiah. Okay? John Hagee, that wicked devil from down in Texas, okay, he said that Jesus never said he was the Messiah. Uh, he is right. But he said, I that speak unto thee am he. He did not say there. I mean, look, look, where my finger is. Look, he did not, where my finger is. Okay? Look. He did not say, he did not say, I am the Messiah, did he? He didn't need to. The woman said it, and he's like, yeah, that's me. Okay? Watch out for these devils, people. Watch out. And you know, and you want to know another really, um, uh, really <laughs> thing that these devils also will do in John chapter 8. They say, Jesus never said, I am God. You're right. He didn't have to. John chapter 8, verse 58. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Quoting Exodus chapter 3. And of course, the Jews went to kill him because he called himself the Father. But yet he did not say, I am God. You got to watch out for these people who strife, who strife about words to no profit. Okay? And then they accuse others of doing the same thing. Distracting people. Okay? Wicked devil. Wicked devil. Okay? You need to shut up. You need to shut up. Okay? You need to shut up. But see, now, here again, got a little rabbit trail. I love rabbit. Anyway, this is why Satan has gone to great lengths to confuse what a Jew is. Okay? Hence, replacement theology. Catholics, Satan's church, Mystery Babylon, with all her whorish daughters, such as all of those involved in the charismatic faith, you heard me right, take offense and negate. Okay? All right? Satan wants to blur what a Jew actually is according to Scripture. And uh, with these, the, the Hebrews are, are those of England, black people, right? <laughs> See what that is? Satan wants you to believe that a Hebrew is actually of Japheth, which I am, or, or of Ham, okay? But See, even of Shem, not all of Shem, 
like those in Japan, China, Korea, okay, they're not Hebrews, okay? But see, the Hebrews were taken out of Shem, okay? And Catholics brazenly, brazenly, and un unashamedly, it's like, well, yeah, we're the new Hebrews, we're the new Jews. But you know what they don't do? <laughs> it, it's, it's very interesting. The Catholics do not bluntly outright say, we are Jews. They don't. But in everything they teach, with their replacement theology, okay, they say that they are Jews, and they're not. Hence, in Revelation chapter 2, verse 9, and Revelation 3, verse 9, okay, those who say they are Jews and are not, okay, Catholics, replacement theology, Brizraelites, black Hebrew Israelites, okay, Jehoes, morons, Mormons, okay? <laughs> Jehoes, they believe they are the 144,000, and nonsense like that. Okay, they don't, with their lips, it's like these people who say in their heart, there is no God, but they won't ever say with their lips, there is no God, will they? See how that works? See how that works? Now, Luke 24, Luke 24, Luke 24. Luke 24. Now here we're going to get into a lot of the stuff that th these people start to deceive people with. Luke 24. We want verses 46 on to verse 48. And, okay. Jesus is talking after his death, burial, and resurrection. Okay. After the death, burial, and resurrection... The blood that was shed on the cross. That began the New Testament. And that began this current dispensation that we are in today. Okay? I'm going to prove that to you in a minute. And said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer, and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. Well, there were Gentiles in Jerusalem. Yes, there were. But what is this actually telling us? To the Jew first. And ye are witnesses of these things. To the Jew first. You know, you read in Romans chapter 1, verses 16 and 17, okay? In Romans chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. Okay, and you charismatics who think Acts is the main source for all your doctrine. <laughs> uh, Romans chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. To the Jew first. And also to the Greek. Greek is a Gentile. Greek is a Gentile. It's not relegated to just Greek people. I'm not a Greek. Okay? It's crazy. For therein is righteousness, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. From faith that was in under the law, that your faith was that God would honor you for doing what he prescribed in the law, and the faith that is up for us today is, in Christ, it is finished. Okay, that's very simple. And you read Acts, Paul himself would do what? As his manner was, go to the Jew first. Okay? All right? It was to the Jew first. Now see, the New Testament begins with the death of the testator, not with the birth. Um, I have yet to meet one charismatic who answers this question right. I've asked this question to a lot of these Christians. Nobody of Christianity with a very, very rare few who are cultic in their nature. <laughs> uh, a very rare few of these Christians uh, are about rightly dividing the word of truth. You ask a Christian... Uh, when did the New Testament begin? Uh, 
they, they hardly ever get it right. You will sometimes get the right answer with King James Bible, William Christian. But uh, the majority of Christianity, you ask them when the New Testament began, um, they're going to say with the birth. Not rightly dividing the word of truth. You talk to a Christian today, you know, one of these church building twits, and I'm being polite when I say that. Um, they look at you as if you fart in their general direction. Okay, they do. They look at you like, I've never heard that. I know you've never heard that because you're being taught by the Jesuits. Okay? You're being taught by Satan in a phallus house. Okay? But Hebrews chapter 9, verse 11 on to verse 18. And the book of Hebrews is written for the Hebrews during the time of Jacob's trouble. And it's written in a style of a, of a breakdown so that the Jews, once they see that man of sin, the son of perdition, and the rebuilt third temple upon the site where I believe where that Dome of the Rock is, okay, they're going to blow that up and the Muslims are going to go nuts and the Muslims are going to be the main focus of attack for that man of sin, the son of perdition at first, then once he goes into the third rebuilt temple and looking and having the visage of the Roman Catholic Jesus saying, I am, and the Jews are going to be like, oh, wait, 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 wait. And they're going to be brought back to here, to Hebrews and James. But, Hebrews 9, 11 on verse 18. But Christ being come and high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building. Notice how they're comparing that to a temple, that will, the third rebuilt temple. Okay? Neither, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit, capital S, offered himself without spot, to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Dead works. It is finished. Okay? With the redemption of the purchased possession and the coming of the time of Jacob's trouble, that does not do away with the fact that Jesus Christ died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And by his blood, is the, you know, the blood shed on the cross is the price for the remission of our sins, okay? First John talks about that, okay? That doesn't change that, okay? And so during the time of Jacob's trouble, the works of the law are going to be reinstituted for a time. Because that man of sin, the son of perdition, has to put on the facade that he's for the Jews, okay? Yes, he does. And remember, that man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to be what he hates the most, He's going to be a Hebraic Jew. And Satan hates the Hebraic Jews. He sure, he sure does. Now let's continue. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament. <laughs> By means of death. For the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament. They which are, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Okay, you charismatics, listen, okay? For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. For a testament is of force after men are dead. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. You know, our Lord says, it's expedient for you that I go away. And when I go away, the Comforter will come. The Holy Ghost, the Lord is that Spirit. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17, okay? The Holy Ghost, our one God, who is comprised of Spirit, soul and body just like you you and i are made in the image of god we both we all even you devils we have a soul a spirit 
a soul and body. Okay? Spirit, soul, and body. All right? But a testament is a fourth force after men are dead. I know because you take pride that the fact that you speak in tongues and it says with tongues in the scriptures. Ugh. Huh. Yeah. You take pride. Well, I, not everybody, you're not as good as us because you don't have the gift of tongues. <laughs> this ridiculous prayer language. Okay. Uh, satanic jibber jabber. That's another video, okay? The testament begins with the death of the testator, okay? Now, the gospels, gospel accounts are in the books of the New Testament. Yes, yes. But right here, the New Testament begins with the death of Jesus, not the birth. And with the death of Jesus brought in this dispensation. It's called rightly dividing the word of truth. Study to shew thyself approved unto God. I, I've noticed a lot of people like to stop there, especially when they quote the scriptures. Okay? Even these guys who don't read the scriptures but read the disgusting Bibles, even they will, you know, you've got to study to show yourself approved unto God. They stop right there, a lot of them. That wicked Mark the Messenger, he stops. Study, show yourself approved, show yourself approved unto God. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? Rightly dividing the word of truth. Being dispensational. Okay? That's you charismatic Pentecostals, uh, Catholics, Methodists, whatever you want to call yourself. Okay? You charismatic Calvinists, whatever you want to call yourselves. Okay? That's your problem. You do not rightly divide the word of truth. Okay? That's your problem. That's your problem. Okay? You're lost. Oh, yes! Yes. Yes. You heard me right. Take offense in a gate. Okay? You don't rightly divide the word of truth. 2 Timothy 2.15. Look it up. In the authorized version of the scriptures. Okay? But see... With the death of the testator brought in what? This dispensation. If you have a question about dispensations, it will be in the description box for you. Ephesians chapter 3. Paul. Who? <laughs> I'm not even going to go there. Enough on that devil. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 7. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words, whereby when ye read ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages, you know, or dispensations, says there are other ages. The Garden of Eden, the time of the patriarchs, under the law. Okay? Those are three different dispensations or ages. Okay? Where in those three dispensations, salvation was different. God's grace is in every dispensation. If God's grace wasn't there, we would all go up like a puff. Okay? God's grace does not define the dispensation, you wicked, easy believism devils. It does not. How one is made right with God within that dispensation is what determines the dispensation. Okay? That's what determines the dispensation. So when you got someone saying they're dispensational and they say to you, it's faith alone from Genesis under Revelation, run away from them because they are not rightly dividing the word of truth. They are actively, knowingly deceiving you. Okay? So, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the capital S Spirit, the Lord himself, that the Gentiles should be made, should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel, 
whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Okay? So, the gospel for today ultimately was revealed unto Paul. Okay? But see, it's to the Jew first and also to the Greek. We have already seen that the New Testament, the Testament is a force after men of dead, or after men are dead. The death, burial, and resurrection brought in this current dispensation that has been going on now for 2,000, uh, 20, 2,023 years. Okay? This dispensation, which is by grace through faith. Okay? We're not under the law. Okay? And for today, in Romans chapter 13, um, there's no keeping the Sabbath, okay? There's no keeping the Sabbath, and you can eat pork if you want to, okay? All right? All right? We'll more on that in a bit. But, with the death of the testator brought in this dispensation, and the gospel for this dispensation was revealed unto Paul. But see, this dispensation was brought in by the death, burial, and resurrection, and the bloodshed on the cross, of course, by our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? It was this dispensation. When our Lord, after his death, burial, and resurrection, appeared unto the disciples within the gospel accounts, the final chapters of uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, after his death, burial, and resurrection, it was this dispensation. Something happened, had to happen first. He had to go to the Jew first or also to, and also, and then to the Greek. Greek is a Gentile. Okay? Go to your Mark chapter 16. Okay? Mark chapter 16. Okay? Now, about Mark chapter 16. This is after the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, it is. It is this dispensation. Yes, it is. But here's what the charismatic does. They come to Mark chapter 16, and they read, let's read verses 14 on to verse 18. Now, we already looked in Luke chapter 24, beginning at Jerusalem, to the Jew first, okay? In the book of Acts, Paul, the apostle unto the Gentiles, while Peter was unto the circumcision, the Jews, okay? Paul, even Paul, to the Jew first. Okay? To the Jew first. All right? Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Okay? Now, is that the gospel of the kingdom? No, it isn't. No, it isn't. Because he died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scripture. Again, Isaiah chapter 53. Okay? Which the Hebraic people like to avoid, Isaiah chapter 53. Okay? So what gospel is he talking about? Well, ultimately, the gospel that will be revealed to Paul, but the spiritual gospel of the kingdom of God. Okay? Now, let's... Keep reading. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Believeth. Believeth. And is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not and is not baptized shall be damned. Oh, wait a minute. That's not there, is it? Okay. Now, hold on. Hold on. We went through that thing about the baptism of John preparing the Hebraic Jewish people for the coming of the kingdom of heaven, which was prophesied that it wasn't going to come because he was going to go to the cross, okay? Okay? And also, we looked in Isaiah that our Lord was going to be a light unto us Gentiles to eventually be grafted in to have part of this thing. But something had to happen first or else our God is not a fair or just God, is he? You know, in Ezekiel chapter 13, 
You know where he says, I have no pleasure in him that dieth, but that he repents. And he says, are not my ways equal and your ways unequal? God is fair, just, and righteous. Okay? If God did not first offer the kingdom of heaven unto his own, he wouldn't be fair, would he? If God, according to his word, did not first offer the kingdom of God unto his own, the Jewish Hebraic people, first, he would not be a fair just God, would he? See? The kingdom of God, while in this dispensation, the kingdom of God, spiritual, was first offered specifically, exclusively, unto the Hebraic people. So, that baptism that our Lord is talking about is very similar to the baptism of John identifying people onto that kingdom of God. Okay? He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Noting, and there's a semicolon there, noting to the Jew first, but he that believeth not shall be damned, and also to the Gentile. Okay? Now, there are these heretics that say baptism is only for Jewish people. That's, no, no. See, in Acts chapter 8, as in with the baptism of Jesus, we see from the get-go what water baptism actually is. It's an identification. Okay? We already read about how men hated the Lord. Kingdoms and nations want nothing to do with the Lord. So a water baptism, I, 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 what is it? An identification with that one whom the world hateth. You see? So in verse 16, your beloved verse 16 Okay, he's referring on to the gospel going to the Jew first and then also on to the Gentile. Okay, don't worry, we're going to get into this very deeply here in a little bit. Now, verse 17, which these stupid charismatics, and I, I'm being polite to you when I say that. My experience with charismatic people, generally, you have to be very rude to some of these people. You really do. You really do. Because you can go through scripture after scripture after scripture showing them, hey, you, you're, they're not going to hear it. They're not going to hear it. They're going to stop their ears and gnash on you with their teeth because they're somebody special because they can speak in satanic jibber jabber. And these, and these signs, and these signs shall follow them that believe. The Jews require a sign. And the Greeks seek after wisdom. A Greek is a Gentile. Okay? A Greek is a Gentile. And see, again, playing back on the thing about how Satan has gone to great lengths to confuse what a Jew actually is. Okay? Now let's continue. And these signs shall follow them that's, that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They did as sign gifts for the Jewish people in the book of Acts. Yes. They shall speak with new tongues. And of course these wicked charismatics like, like to put in that satanic jibber jabber. Uh, when the Lord saved me, my speech changed. Okay? You speak differently. A lot of people can fake that. But when you scratch them and they send you uh, emails cursing you all, cursing you, and I still have those emails. Um, yeah, yeah. We speak with new tongues. Okay? You change. The Lord changes the way you speak. You don't want to speak as those of the world. Not this satanic, devilish, blah, 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 blah. Jibber jab. They shall take up serpents. Take up serpents. Um, we are to be as shrewd as serpents and harmless as, as doves. We are in the world, 
and not of the world. Okay? We are here to hinder. We are here to, um, to fight against the devices of Satan. Okay? So they shall take up serpents, meaning we take up the fight against Satan and his devices. Okay? Because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Okay? But mighty in God. The pulling down of strongholds. Hold your place here and let's look at that. That is 2 Corinthians chapter 10. I believe. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Verses 4 on to verse... Uh, 4 on to verse... Uh, verses 3. On to verse 5. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Okay? So this, they shall take up serpents. I've seen videos of those southern snake handler guys who are Pentecostals and stuff like that. That's crazy. You know what else those snake handler guys do? And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. Now, in the book of Acts, we do not read of any incident where one of the apostles drank poison. It is surmised that John the apostle whom Jesus loved, the disciple whom Jesus loved, it is surmised that they tried to kill him by him drinking a cup of poison. Uh, where is that in the scripture? But also you read in the book of Ezekiel about how, and also in Peter, how we are to desire the sincere milk of the word. Okay? Wash them in pure water. You know, you have fouled the waters with your feet, as it says in Ezekiel. Okay? All right? So, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. Drink any deadly thing. Like, okay, like I said, the scriptures are compared onto some, uh, um, the sincere milk of the word. The water of your, wash them in the water of your word. Uh, how shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Okay? So, if we know what the truth is, we could be able to read a Bible and not get messed up by it. Okay? That's what that is a reference onto. There is no scriptural evidence of anybody will, of the apostles or disciples drinking a cup of poison. Okay? There's no scriptural evidence to support that. Yes, you can tell me about John and the legend about that. There's no scriptural evidence. Just like there is no scriptural evidence that Peter ever went to Rome. Actually, scripturally, it's Paul who went to Rome. Okay? You with me? They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Of course, you see that in the book of Acts. Absolutely. Absolutely, you see that in the book of Acts, okay? Those were sign gifts for the Jews, okay? Which are no longer in operation. Go now to your beloved Acts chapter 2, verse 38, okay? We are going to get into the thing of speaking with tongues, devils, okay? We will get to that, not today. Okay, not today. Uh, questions about that? Again, our beloved brother, brother Alexander Hartley, Alexander B. Hartley, my best friend. That will be in the description box if I remember. If not, brother, put it in the comment section. Okay? But, you're Acts 2.38. Now, there are those out there who want to tell you that there were Gentiles in Acts chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 13. My dearest brother, there were no Gentiles in Acts chapter 2. Present. There were none. Okay? There were none. There are Hebrews 
who were born in New York. Okay? And because they were born in New York, they speak the tongue, they speak with the tongue, the language of American English. Okay? But they're Hebrews. But they were born in New York. There are Hebrews that were born in Chicago. Okay? They speak with the tongue, American English, differing from how, you know, in New York and in Chicago, you get the point, okay? Because it goes through the known languages, known languages in Acts chapter 2. There were no Gentiles, none, in Acts chapter 2. None, no um, beginning at Jerusalem to the Jew first, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of Israel. The, okay, if the kingdom of God was first specifically offered unto the Jews, but yet we're, these devils want you to believe that the kingdom of God was immediately, immediately offered unto all, that's not how it works, even though it was this dispensation, okay? See, and that's what so many people get confused on, okay? That's where Satan, through these heretics, weave their confusion, okay? The death, burial, and resurrection, that's this dispensation. But the kingdom of God was first offered to the Jew alone, okay? The dispensation didn't change. It was this current dispensation the only thing is that the kingdom of God, the spiritual, was first offered to the Jewish people, the Hebrews. Okay? And then you can read Acts chapter 2. We will do that in another video. Um, these were Jewish people, Hebraic people, okay, who were of differing religions, differing parts of the area, but were Hebrews. Okay? All right? Don't let the devil deceive you on that. But now Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Now, as we looked at, the baptism of John, was it of heaven or of men? It was of heaven. Why here in your beloved Acts 2, 38, which you think is the gospel, and they go to Mark chapter 16 to try to prove it. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Okay? All right? And just as the baptism of John, this baptism that Peter mentioned was an identification onto the kingdom of God that was first being offered onto the Jewish people. Okay? All right? Now, also, when you go to Acts chapter 3, Acts chapter 3, verses 19 on to verse 21, you see something different, okay? 19 on to verse 21 in Acts chapter 3. Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord, and he shall send Jesus Christ, and the Lord is that spirit, which, which before was preached unto you, whom the heavens must receive until the time of restitution of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. Why didn't Peter mention baptism there? Hmm? Well, there were Gentiles there. There were no Gentiles there. Hmm? Why didn't he? Hmm? Why didn't he? Oh, you should hear, you should hear the... Oh, gymnastics that these charismatic devils go through. Like that Mike Brown guy who is a Jew. Oh, that guy's going to pay a heavy price at the great white throne of judgment. I'll tell you what. Okay? But why didn't he mention baptism there? Hmm? Hmm? Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. So a conversion? Hmm? Really? Hmm. And, and, and while we're at it, let's look at Acts chapter 4, verses 23 on to verse 30. And being let go, 
Okay? And being let go. They were they were captured and whatnot. They went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God which has made heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is, who by the mouth of thy servant David has said, Why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? Psalm 2. The kings of the earth stood up, and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ, anointed one. For of a truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, Christ, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together. Okay? Those who were attacking him. Okay? Right there in verse 27. All right? Verse 26. For kings of the earth stood up and the rulers were gathered together against. Verse 27 does not say that they were, that in this context, that there were Gentiles there at that time present. What he is talking about is, verse 27, those who withstood Jesus, like we already looked at in Isaiah. Okay? You can try to stretch whatever you want to. There were no Gentiles present. Until Acts chapter 8. We're getting there. For to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done, and now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word by stretching forth thine hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. What is that? 1 Corinthians chapter 1. First Corinthians, and see, again, Satan has gone to at great lengths to confuse what is a Jew. Okay, we walk by faith, not by sight today. Okay, all right, but think about it. You think you saw God, eh, mate? You saw a devil. Hmm? You think the Lord is with you because you speak in satanic jibber-jabber? No. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 22 and verse 24. For the Jews. Well, what is a Jew? In the description box. For the Jews require a sign. And the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified. Unto the Jews a stumbling block. Jews first, and on to the Greeks, Gentiles, foolishness. There you see it again. To the Jew first, and also to the Greek, a Greek is a Gentile. Okay? You can try all your gymnastics, okay? In Acts chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, okay? It was to the Jew first. There were no Gentiles in Acts chapter 2. Brother, I love you. There were no Gentiles there. If there were, you would have glaring contradictions. God would be a liar. Okay, now let's continue. But unto them which are called, look at that, both Jews and Greeks, Greeks and Gentiles. I've heard people, well, it says Greeks only, who strive, who strive about words. You know, they strain at a gnat. It says, but, straining at a gnat and swallow the camel. Well, Paul is writing for another dispensation. Shut up. Okay. Just like the, they did with Romans. In Romans, what was it, 10 uh, verse uh, 13 or something like that, right? It's like, well, it says believe. Strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. Watch out for that. 
But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews, a <laughs> stumbling block, and unto the Greeks, foolishness. But unto them which are called, called. Jesus Christ went the way of the cross. Called is the way of the cross. God chose, that's east. God chose the way of the cross. You are of the called when you go the way he called you, the way of the cross. Okay? I know I repeat that a lot. But remember, especially with these satanic devils on this dastardly YouTube, you are only revelant, uh, revelant as your newest video, and especially when they have shadow banned you. <laughs> okay? All right? But unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Okay, you see in those three verses, Jews and Greeks, Jews and Greeks, i.e. Jew then Gentile, Jew then Gentile, Jew then Gentile. Okay? What does that mean, Brad? Dear friend, it was to the Jew first. The water baptism that you hold as your gospel that Satan has confused you with in Mark chapter 16 and your beloved Acts 2.38 are identifying features of those Hebraic Jews who believed, who were saved within this dispensation, but identified with that kingdom of God first offered unto the Jews. Mark chapter 16 when our Lord says, He who believeth and is baptized, he even mentions it, that it's to the Jew first, and also to the Greek, a Greek is a Gentile, okay? All right? And good old Peter here knew what John's baptism was, okay? After this, brother, is where we're going to put that in what you sent me, okay? Now, go to Acts chapter 10. Okay? Now, we're, we're going to address when this all changed. But Acts chapter 10. Good old Peter. <laughs> good old Peter. Uh, who, you know, they I've heard uh, put his foot in his mouth, Peter. Okay? Peter was the quint quintessent Jew. He needed a sign. Uh, Paul. The Lord himself appeared to Paul. A sign. The Jews require a sign. You know what the sign is unto the Jews today? Seeing their God in us Gentiles. And when the Jews see these stupid idiots like Kenneth Copeland, Joyce Myers, okay, and these and all these other Gentiles. They've, they've turned off the TVs. Most of them don't watch TV anyway. Praise the Lord. They see, the Jewish people of today see this Christianity. Why do you think Jews who are of the Church of the Living God are adamant, I'm a Messianic Jew? Okay? I have, with, that I have communicated with, also are adamant, it's like, no, I'm a Messianic Jew. Be why? Because they understand where Christian, the term, and who was responsible for it came from. You didn't mention any of that in your stupid little arguments, did you, devil? No. No. And rightly so for the Jews. Okay? But, but, the Jews require a sign. And today, the sign for the Jewish people is us Gentiles having their God within us being a witness unto them. And praise you, Father. The Lord has used myself in many of those situations. Okay? That, I'm, if that sounds like I'm boasting, I'm sorry. Okay? But that is the sign unto the Jews for today. The, okay, the working of miracles like the magicians and stuff like that, the sign gifts in Acts, after Acts chapter 7, started to diminish. Why did Paul leave that one guy, Mil Militum, sick? Because he didn't have enough life. Shut up. Shut up. The sign gifts were specific for the Jewish people. 
Okay? And when you look at those when they speak with tongues, there were always Jews present. Okay? Somewhere there were Jews present. Okay? But Peter needed a sign. The sheet. Rise, Peter, kill and eat. It's like, not so, Lord. Nothing unclean has come to my lips. And the Lord said, what I have cleansed, that call thou not common. Okay? Some people like to go to that here in Acts chapter 10. That's where the dietary restrictions were lifted. No, it's 1 Timothy chapter 4. You can go ahead and eat pork today. Okay? Because if you're saved, that circumcision made without hands, the Lord Jesus Christ is in you. Okay? You eat something, it's going to go in your belly and go out in the draught and whatnot. Okay? You can eat pork today because it's sanctified by the word of God and by prayer. Okay? You can eat pork today. You can eat shellfish. Yes, you can eat shrimp. Yes, you can. It's okay. You don't want to? That's fine. Knock yourself up. Okay? Knock yourself up. Whatever. Okay? But you can do that today. Got to rightly divide the word of truth. But Peter needed a sign. Okay? And Peter, this is Acts chapter 10, and Peter, who knew what the baptism of John was, okay? He knew the baptism of John. Check this out. Verse 44 on to verse 48. Now, this is after Acts chapter 7, obviously after Acts chapter 8, but before Acts chapter 15. I'll tell you that significance in a minute. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. And they that and they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, astonished. As many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. They were like, Wow, they got it just like we do. That grafting in of us to make them jealous. See. Okay? And Peter, the quintessent Jew, who needed a sign, followed uh, with other Jews there. Peter was there. Okay? Cornelius, yes, he was a Gentile. Okay? These are signs for the Jews that were there. Okay? And look at verse 45 again. And they have the circumcision. Jews. Jews. Hebrews. They. More than Peter. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter because that on the Gentiles, us Gentiles, also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues. Not in tongues. With tongues. Devils. With tongue. Not spiking in tongues. Blah, 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 blah. That's satanic. That is not of God. With tongues. Thank you. We will address that at a later time. And magnify God. Then answered Peter. <laughs> Knowing the baptism of John. John in type. You know, baptizing people for the kingdom of heaven? Baptizing people for the kingdom of God? Do you get it? I hope you do. Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. Okay? And also now, thank you, brother. Acts chapter 19, verses 1 on to verse 7. Okay? Now, this is after Acts chapter 15. We'll talk about that in a second. We're almost done, actually. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coasts, came to Ephesus, and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed and were baptized? Have ye, he said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? Now there's a contradiction here, isn't there? No. 
same dispensation, but what happened? We were grafted in, okay? It was already this dispensation by faith, by grace through faith, excuse me, okay? It was already this dispensation, but it's to the Jew first. And that baptism at the first, as what you saw with the baptism of Jesus, what baptism was signifying, okay? An identification. And people, and these guys, even Luther, the German Catholic, fell for that, that water baptism was uh, salvific, okay? It, it's not salvific. It's not required for your salvation. That blows out of the water the Campbellites like those idiot uh, Robertsons, okay? You Pentecostals, Catholics, which openly teach that bad water baptism is a requirement, and they just throw water at you, you know? At least the, the, the stupid Campbellites and a lot of the blah, 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 Pentecostals will dunk you at least, okay? But anyway, okay? And he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. Verse 3. And he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? Unto what then were ye baptized? Unto what were you identified with? Hmm? And they said, Unto John's baptism. John's baptism. And John's baptism, excuse me, for was for what? The kingdom of heaven. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Okay? And now check this out. And when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. And all the men were about twelve. Hmm. Then you read in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, tongues are for a sign. A sign unto who? Hmm? The Jews require a sign. Uh, among these 12 and whoever was with Paul, and with Paul, there were Jews present. Doesn't say that. Um, you compare scripture with scripture. Okay? That's a sign gift. And notice when the Holy Ghost came on them, they were baptized, identified in the name of the Lord Jesus. Okay? And they spake with tongues. Okay? He put his hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost. Not because they were baptized. Okay? Your baptismal regeneration is being blown apart there, charismatic Catholic. Because charismatic, you are basically Catholic. You are Catholic. You deny eternal security. You don't rightly divide the word of truth. You believe that you're going through the great tribulation. Okay? <laughs> you, you believe you got to be dunked in water. You believe that the evidence of the Holy Ghost is blah, 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 blah. Okay, you're a Catholic. You are a Catholic. You are of the of your mother. You are of your mother. Roman Catholicism. And all the men were about twelve. Now see, the thing about Acts chapter ten was Peter was astonished. Why? Because of Romans chapter 11, Romans chapter 11, verses 11 on to verse 12. Now, of course, in Romans chapter 11, 
I say then, hath God, verse 1, hath God cast away his people? God forbid. Okay? God is not done with the, uh, with the Jew. Okay? We have been grafted into the Jew. Okay? Into their tree. We are not Jews. Okay? We are not Jews. Okay? In Christ there is neither Jew nor Greek. Okay? We are not Jews. Okay? We're not. Okay? But God hath not cast away his people. God's not done with Israel. Okay? Or else he's a liar, and then the whole of the Old, Old Testament you should throw out the window. Oh, which some of these hyper-dispensationalists say you ought to do. Anyway, what is our purpose as, uh, as Gentiles within the body of Christ? Okay? I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. But rather that through their fall, salvation has come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? And then again, there are devils out there who want to defend themselves and set up their attack points who will uh, attack falling away. It's save people messed up. No, no. Okay, here's a good example of that. The Jews are fallen. Okay, yes, unfortunately, a lot of Jews are going to go to hell. Yes. But Jewry, in its entirety, has fallen. They haven't fallen away, you idiot! <clears throat> Never mind. It's a different, different thing. And also, in Romans chapter 11, verses 28 on to verse 29, As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes, but as touching the election, context here, the Jews are the apple of God's eye. Remember, words are defined by context, okay? They are beloved for the father's sakes. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. What does that mean? God's not done with Israel, okay? We have not replaced Israel. God forbid, no. No. Okay. So we being grafted into the tree to make the Jews jealous, and that's that that's about uh, Acts chapter 10. Okay? Peter and all his of, of the circumcision were like, wow, dude, that they, 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 they you know. Now see, the hyper dispensationalist will say that there is one body of the Jew and then one of the Gentile. And they'll say that the Gospels are different. That is not true. That is not true. In this dispensation, it is by grace through faith. The baptism there was an identifying thing. Okay? And also you saw in Acts chapter 238, okay? And also in Acts chapter 3, okay? All right? The baptism thing was for identification. And also, you saw in Acts chapter 19, apart from baptism, uh, the laying down of the hands, they received the Holy Ghost anyway. Okay? Look! Water baptism is not required for your salvation. Okay? Because what? What, you think you're going to get before the Lord because uh, on to man, uh, it is appointed on to men once to die and after that the judgment... You think you're going to go to the Lord? Did you believe on me? Yes, Lord, I believed on you. Were you baptized? No. Whoop, going to hell. <laughs> or what's another one? Did you believe on me? You did? Good. Were you baptized? Good. Good. Did you speak with tongues? No. Flush. What happened? It's to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Greek is a Gentile. Okay? To the Jew first and also to the Gentile. Okay? What happened? Acts chapter 7, verses 51 on to verse 60. Okay? Stephen, ye stiff necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost. As your fathers did, so do ye. 
Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which shoot before the coming of the capital J, just capital O1, our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers, who have received the law by the disposition of angels, and have not cut, uh, not kept it. Now, in Acts chapter 2, verse 37, they were pricked to the heart, and they asked, what? oh wow, what shall we do? These guys, when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart. And when someone is cut to the heart, what did they do? And they gnashed on him with their teeth. Like a lot of you charismatics, if you make it this far. You don't want to hear this. That's your problem. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with, the, with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet, whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God, and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Why is this so significant? This, Acts chapter 7, and the stoning of Stephen, is the official rejection of the kingdom of God of Jewry. Jewry. Okay? Not the individual Jews, but of Jewry in a whole. Okay? All right? As with the kingdom of heaven, he goes to the cross as prophesied. Death, burial, and resurrection shed his blood on the cross. The kingdom of heaven put off. Okay? Put off. Okay? Death, burial, and resurrection. The kingdom of God. To the Jew first. Acts chapter 7. Jewry rejected the gospel, the kingdom of God, in this dispensation. Hence, Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8, verses 29 on to verse 37. <laughs> Christianity is the white man's gospel. Uh, you know what? Actually, you're right. Christianity is not the faith that was once delivered onto the saints. Okay? But, but, yeah, because Catholics, you know, Christians, mainly of Japheth. Okay? But, Acts chapter 8, verses 29 on to verse 37. Then this capitalist spirit said unto Philip, excuse me, <clears throat> go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I, except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter and like a lamb dumb before his shear. Before his shear, so opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this? Of himself or of some other man? And um, this eunuch, who was he? Verse 27. And he arose and behold, a man of Ethiopia, an eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship. Ethiopia. That's in Africa, right? So what does that mean? The Ethiopian eunuch was a black man. He was a Hamite. Oh. <laughs> Isn't that something? 
Isn't that something? So, the first Gentile um, grafted in, as recorded in scripture here, the Ethiopian eunuch was a black Hamite. Oh, but that means all you of Ham are the chosen ones, right? Shut up! God is not a respecter of persons. But they say, well, you know, Christianity is white man's religion. I agree with you with that. But the faith that was once delivered unto the saints is to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. Guess what? Guess what? You're of Ham or Japheth, you're a Gentile. Deal with it. You're not a Hebrew. Then Philip opened his mouth, verse 35, and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. The Ethiopian eunuch was reading what we know as Isaiah 53. And then Philip's like, that's about Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, see, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? Now, let's see if you're paying attention. And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized them. Now, if you were following me along in the scriptures, you're like, Brad, Brad, wait, 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 you, you skipped verse 37. I know, I did that on purpose. The Bibles, with few exceptions, take out uh, Acts 8, 37. Why do they do that? Let's read Acts 8.37 now. And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That's why you get baptized today. Now, see, there are those out there who will take what we were just talking about and say, well, see, the Jews, they need to be baptized for salvific reasons. No, no. The death, burial, and resurrection brought in this dispensation, which is by grace, through faith. Not by any works that we have done, okay? Not of the works of law by or any works such as water baptism, Okay? The water baptism that is in Acts chapter 2, verse 38, was very similar unto the baptism of John the Baptist as identifying people and preparing them for, first, the kingdom of heaven, and secondly, for the kingdom of God, which both of Jewry in their entirety re rejected. Okay? Not individually, but in its entirety. Okay? You get baptized today as an outer profession of an inner conversion. That's why you get baptized. It has nothing to do with salvation, nor did it. Because you go back to Mark, well, Mark 16, Mark, that, Brad, you said that was for this dispensation. Yes, it was. To the Jew first and also to the Greek, okay? It starts with believeth, okay? All right? Remember, the Jews were being baptized to identify them as of the kingdom of God. But when Jewry in Acts chapter 7 stoned Stephen, Jewry, that was Jewry in its entirety, rejected the kingdom of God. Hence, a black Ethiopian eunuch grafted in, first recorded. Okay? And now let's close this with Acts chapter 15. Okay? Acts chapter 15. Okay? And here this blows out of the water. This blows out of the water. That, well, the Jews, they, they got to be baptized. But us Gentiles, shut up. No. The significance of Acts chapter 15. We already looked at Ephesians chapter 3. The gospel for today was revealed unto Paul. But... 
as the kingdom of heaven was first offered unto the Jewish people, the kingdom of God had to first be offered unto the Jewish people. The Jewish people, as Jewry, as its entirety, rejected the kingdom of heaven, put off. Rejected the kingdom of God, hence us Gentiles are grafted into their tree to make them jealous. And today, their sign is to see their God in us. And when they look at what this Christianity is, they laugh at it. Yes, they do. When they see those of us of the Church of the Living God arguing over stupidity and being taken in the arguments of these devils trying to distract us from doing what we got to be doing. Okay? Yes, I do agree with that. Okay? Okay? But Acts chapter 15. The gospel for today was revealed unto Paul. You, some, you noticed some discrepancies, didn't you? In Acts chapter 2 and Acts chapter 3. Okay? There were discrepancies. But yet it was this dispensation. But what was going on? To the Jew first. Okay? The dispensation didn't change. The gospel didn't change either. Okay? It was by grace through faith. And in Acts chapter 15, there were of the circumcision, Jews, coming around saying, hey, you got to circumcise them. They got to keep the law to be saved. And what did they do? Acts chapter 15, verses 6 on to verse 11. And the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as the, he did unto us. And put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith and water baptism. Purifying their hearts by faith, by his grace. Now, therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck, neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear, meaning the law of Moses, which is there to show you that you can't keep what God wants you to keep perfectly. Okay? But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. Water baptism is not a requirement for your salvation, nor was it ever. Okay? And those of you who believe it is, you're heretics. You're heretics. You guys, are truly adding works to salvation, which is by grace through faith for us today in this dispensation. And why we looked at Acts chapter 15 specifically? Because after the Jerusalem conference, everybody, including Peter, were preaching the gospel that was revealed unto Paul. Okay? Now remember... Acts chapter 1, it was, is, this dispensation by grace through faith. But the kingdom of God was first offered to the Hebraic Jewish people exclusively. And then when Jewry in its entirety rejected it, then comes along us Gentiles to make them jealous. And that is the truth of the matter. Now, ought you to be baptized? Sure. Yes, you ought to. Are you going to go to hell if you don't get baptized? No. No. Because believing and then being dunked in water? No. That is not for the gospel. That is not the gospel. Okay? That was identifying those Jews who are of the kingdom of God, the body of Christ, 
Okay. Oh, and one second, one second. Let me pause this. Romans 16, 7. Romans chapter 16, verse 7. Romans chapter 16, verse 7. <laughs> Paul, here speaking. Salute Andronicus and Junia, my kinsmen and my fellow prisoners, who are notes among the apostles, who also were in Christ before me. What does that mean? That means that there is not a separate body for the Jew and for the Gentile. Like the hyper-dispensationalists will tell you that there's one gospel for the Jew and one to the Gentile. No. No. This dispensation is by grace through faith. And you mean there were people in the body of Christ before Paul? Yes. Yes. This lie that there was there, there are two bodies, one of the Jew and one of the Gentile. Even James kind of got messed up with that a little bit. We addressed that in the video about Acts chapter 21. Okay, we talk about that. All right. There were no two different bodies, one to the Jew and one to the Gentile. No, it was this dispensation. All that was happening was it was to the Jew first and also to the Greek. And we looked in Isaiah. It was prophesied that we were going to be grafted in. There you go. Okay, so going to get this video uploaded on the main channel. Uh, thank you for watching this. If you do, if, you, if you're charismatic and make it through this whole thing, I commend you. Most of you won't make it past the 17 minute mark. And that's whatever. Pray for us. As we pray for so many of you. We love you. Thank you for watching this if you do. Any questions, go ahead and leave them in the whatever. Or get a hold of me personally. You got emails. Okay. You threaten me or send me something like that. I will expose your email and expose you publicly. Just so you know. Okay. So. Anyway, thank you, brethren. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.